They may look small, but survivors can't be choosers. To make fire, all I need is bamboo. The bamboo fire soil was first taught to me by a US Army instructor, and it's one of the best tropical survival skills I know. The friction from the sharp edge of the bamboo is all that's needed to ignite the bamboo shavings. Sometimes you really got to work to get a fire, but it's always worth it because the fire lifts your morale, lifts your spirits, cooks your food, sterilizes your water, and you can even signal with it. Here's my cooking pot. Time to cook these little fellas up. One of the most amazing stories of jungle survival that I know is of a man called Jim Bradley, who during the Second World War was imprisoned on the Thailand to Burma Railway. He had to overcome his fear of the jungle to escape from imprisonment, a journey that took him over eight weeks. I was at one of the worst camps on the railway. We had tremendous deaths through cholera, dysentery, malaria. 1,600 of us walked in, and within three months, uh, 1,200 were dead. My colonel felt that we should try and escape, or someone should try and escape, and bring this to the notice of the outside world. We had to succeed because death was the penalty for anyone escaping. Jim and his fellow escapees had managed to get hold of three machetes, several pounds of rice, and a few tins of sardines. Jim had always planned to escape and had managed to hide a compass from the Japanese prison guards. All we could do was cut a course westwards. We couldn't look for any valleys. There were no tracks to find. We just simply cut and cut westwards. We all had to agree verbally that if we became a casualty, we would have to be left. We had to leave one man who had become so infected with gangrene in his back and he'd become delirious and walked out in the night. We looked for him back along the track, but obviously couldn't waste too much time. And so we had to implement this terrible agreement and leave him. He was a very brave man. This was not to be the only death. By the end of their eight-week struggle, five of the original ten had died. I really remember the absolute moisture, wetness, dampness and darkness with very little hope uh, of ever coming out of it. But we had to keep that hope going. Our worst problem, strangely enough, was bamboo. This was probably about five inches in diameter and very hard to cut through. The main injury were tropical ulcers. Ian Moffat, who was with us, if he had been within reach of medical help, I'm sure they would have amputated both legs. I think he was saved by the fact that maggots came into them and they eat, ate the putrefied flesh. After five weeks, the soldiers had run out of food and were surviving on water alone. 
The constant wet had given them crippling trench foot and it was becoming excruciating to walk. They also suffered blood-sucking leeches, impossible to stop from penetrating their boots and clothing. Towards the end, the soldiers discovered a river. Too weak to walk, they decided to build a raft from strips of blanket and bamboo. Unfortunately, the raft broke up in some rapids, and soon after, the men were discovered on the riverbank by Burmese hunters, who betrayed them by selling them back to the Japanese. At the end, we felt we'd spent eight weeks of really extreme hardship and lost five friends, and now we were back in the hands of the Japanese, really in a worse position than we were before we left. There's, strangely enough, there isn't a day, even after 55 years, that I don't think about it. And realize, in a way, how lucky I was. Um, I think I thought a lot in the jungle, but if I got home, I would never expect anything as my right. And that, I think, I have kept to. Jim and his fellow survivors went on to endure two months solitary confinement in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. They were spared execution, partly because the Japanese had such respect for what these courageous men had managed to achieve. This is the biggest bamboo I've ever worked with. Sometimes it's hard to believe that this is a grass, not a tree. I'm going to use these giant grass stems to get out of the jungle. Rivers are the jungle's natural highways, the place you're most likely to come across help. Like Jim Bradley, I'm going to build a raft to get out. Bamboo is an excellent material for raft building. It's strong, light and extremely buoyant. Well, it's the moment of truth. In theory, I should be able to float 100 miles or more on a raft like this. You know how it is. In practice, things don't always work out that way. Here goes. For me, the jungle is a very special place. Living here can be hard, but most people who spend time exploring the jungle become intoxicated by its mystery and lure. If you know what you're doing, survival needn't be an ordeal. I find it exhilarating to be here because the jungle offers such an abundance of natural resources to work with.